All right, class, so this is the video explaining the different hybridization we're gonna see for this formaldehyde molecule. So this CH2 double bonded 2O, this is called formaldehyde. And we're gonna be talking about the bonding picture, the hybridization, and the electron configurations, all that sort of fun stuff. Um, to help us, I've also made this little model of this formaldehyde molecule. So here we've got our carbons with our two hydrogens, and then we've got a double bond, so we can see a double bond there between carbon and oxygen, and then these two um, little spacer things, those are going to represent our lone pairs of electrons. So this model will sort of guide us as we're, as we're looking at this, at this picture. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do is sort of look at the hybridization around these two different um, carbon and oxygen. So this carbon will have an sp2 hybridization. And this oxygen, this oxygen is also going to have an sp2 hybridization. It's going to have one, two, three sort of groups around it, three groupings of electrons. This double bond we still count as one. Um, so one, two, three, and those three groups will want to get as far away from each other as possible. So we're going to have an sp2 hybridization around that oxygen as well as this carbon. Again, I've got 120 degree angles here. You know, if I want to talk about the molecular geometry around this carbon here, this would be trigonal planar, right? Trigonal planar, 120 degree angles between those, those bonds. So Let's talk about that carbon in a little bit more detail. So we know that it's sp2 hybridized. So if I wanted to, to think about the hybridization of the atomic orbitals, we would draw out a picture that looks like this. So this picture here, this represents our ground state electron configuration of a carbon atom. Right, so this is what we talked about, you know, going back to chapter seven, um, you know, electron configurations, things like that. We're gonna do an sp2 hybridization, so sp2, hybridization, sure, why not? And we're gonna end up with 1s3 sp2 orbitals and then a leftover 2p. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking this 2s orbital and then two of the 2p orbitals, we're gonna put those into the little hybridization machine and we're gonna end up with three of these sp2 hybrid orbitals, and then a leftover 2p orbital. Then we're gonna fill in our electrons. And here we're gonna again put that extra electron up in the 2p orbital. We'll talk more about why that is and how that sort of makes sense in just a minute. But this is sort of the, the first picture that we're, we're gonna to wanna to look at. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna consider how are these different orbitals gonna participate in bonding, right? So these are our valence orbitals that contain our valence electrons. So these four electrons, those are our valence electrons for carbon. Carbon brings four valence electrons to the party. And we need to deal with those four electrons to show you know, how this bonding works in our bonding picture. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna say, well, these three orbitals, they're gonna participate in what we call our sigma bonds. And two of them are gonna be CH sigma bonds. So in my model here, or really even on this picture here, these two bonds here and here, carbon to hydrogen, those are gonna be a sharing of electrons, right? And so if we think about this carbon here, we're saying that it's gonna be bringing one electron, one electron, and two electrons really uh, to form this double bond. And then the other electron for each bond is gonna come from hydrogen. Hydrogen will bring an electron, it's got one valence electron, and then that carbon and hydrogen, they'll share that electron in this bond here. So this bond here, it contains two electrons, and those two electrons are gonna be shared between this carbon hydrogen you know, atom, uh, and that's gonna form that bond. So each one of those is really represented here on my you know, diagram, each one of these would be one of these carbon hydrogen bonds. And then over here, this is gonna be my carbon to oxygen, what I call sigma bond. And that's gonna have two electrons directly in between this carbon and this oxygen. Now, this leftover 2p orbital, what's going on there is if I turn my molecule this way, so I've got my hydrogen going into the board and coming out of the board, I'm gonna have a leftover p orbital, right? This is a sp2 hybridization. So then I'm gonna have that leftover 2p orbital. And that leftover 2p orbital, it's gonna be going up and down, up and down. And that leftover p orbital, it can then interact with a leftover p orbital on this oxygen and share some more electrons. So we're gonna put in another electron here. So this is my CO, what we call pi bond. And that really sort of forms the two different bonds between carbon and oxygen. One of them is sort of this type, where the electrons are directly in between. And the other is this pi bond type, 
Um, and I'll show you some extra pictures of those later on because it's a little bit hard to, to visualize, I think, sometimes. So let's talk about oxygen first before we get to that, though. So for oxygen, I'm going to have a similar sort of hybridization, 1s, 2s, 2p. I'm going to do an sp2 hybridization. So I'll get 1s, sp2, and then a leftover 2p orbital. And now we need to think about how many electrons does oxygen have? Well, oxygen has eight total electrons and four valence electrons. So when we're doing our hybridization, we really disregard the number of electrons that we see here, right? We're just gonna be doing that hybridization and then we'll worry about filling in the electrons. So the 1s, those are core electrons, they're just gonna sort of move over. But now I've got six electrons that I need to fill in to this valence electron level for my oxygen atom. So the first four, just like in carbon, but now I've got two more that I'm gonna fill in like that. So now this picture here, this is my hybrid orbital picture, we really need to sort of make sense of how that sort of relates to what we're actually observing. These two orbitals here, those are my sp2 hybridized orbitals, and they are already filled with lone pair electrons. So what these represent are our lone pairs on oxygen. And then this right here, this is my carbon to oxygen, or oxygen to carbon might be a better way to put it, sigma bond. So this right here, right, this is sort of the opposite view of this same bond over here. There's gonna be a sigma bond. So in this case, this dashed arrow, this dashed electron, is really this full electron from carbon, right? They're sharing those two electrons. So in total here, right, those are one sigma bond between carbon and oxygen. And then up here, we're gonna have the same thing. This will be, let's write an oxygen carbon pi bond. But this is really the same idea as we have here, the same picture, the same sharing of those electrons. So that will represent this pi bond that we see between carbon and oxygen. So let's look at some more, maybe um, nicer looking pictures. So this picture here is gonna really show us sort of our different orbitals. So let's start with this carbon here. In green, I've got my sp2 hybridized system. This one's coming out towards us, right? So then this would be like this. So this is coming out towards us. And then we've got another one going into the board away from us. That's our sp2 level. And then I'm forming a, a sp2 hybridized sigma bond, right? That's going between carbon and oxygen. And then for oxygen, I've got my sp2 hybridized lone pairs. So this lone pair here, lone pair here. Again, those are gonna be arranged 120 degrees apart. And then above and below, that's where my pi bond is gonna be. So this pi bond, if I wanted to sort of redraw this between carbon and oxygen, so what these would represent would be our leftover 2p orbitals, and then we're gonna have some overlap above and below. So that's what we're, we're seeing here in this, this pi picture. Um, so these you know, leftover p orbitals above and below, and then we're gonna see electron density sort of above and below, um, that's gonna be our pi bond. And in total, there'll be two electrons moving in this space. So there'll be sort of one, two electrons. And then in the middle, we're gonna also have two electrons. So I sort of like to write two electrons there, one electron above and below. So in total, there's four electrons in between this carbon and oxygen. And four electrons means that there's gonna be two bonds between carbon and oxygen. So hopefully this picture um, is starting to, to make sense a little bit more for all of the different ways that we're gonna be thinking about hybridization and bonding. I know it looks really confusing, but um, hopefully you can sort of work your way through it. We can extend this to triple bonds, um, and probably on the next video I will uh, talk about triple bonds and, and try to look at some pictures of that. All right, hope that helps.